Hello, 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 and welcome to ER. This is Life Coaching with Ink Ivory. Hi. <clears throat> I'm excited once again to be joining you on ER, mainly because just as well as people rush to the emergency room to get assistance in whatever is in a body, I'm quite sure, and I know for a fact just by the many responses that I get that people rush to ER to get assistance and whatever is ailing them emotionally and mentally and that's my main purpose of being wired the way I'm wired I'm wired to help others grow and be better and trust me it's not a standing over looking down at you type of connection We're growing together because every time I dive into a new topic, I'm doing intense research and background to affirm what I already know and also add to what I already know. So we're growing. And you want to ever, forever be in a posture of growing because that's how you stay youthful. That's how you stay young. That's how you, you, you stay vibrant. The minute you think you have estimated to know everything there is to know about life is the minute you sign off on the area of stagnation, the area of complacency, the area of death and death of your spirit more than anything. Your body can live for a while and your spirit will be dampened. It won't be as vibrant. It won't be excelling and looking at life. There's a certain thing that happens when you're moving in a direction of being vibrant. You start appreciating the little things. There are times when I'm driving and I just look up at the clouds. I remember when I was a little kid, and this goes back to staying youthful. I remember when... I was a little kid. I would sit on my grandmother's porch and me and my siblings would look at the clouds and see what they shape like and see how big they are and this one's small and look at how fast this one is moving and this one don't seem like it's moving at all. We sat back and did that. And I think as adults, we lose sight of that time to do that. And I'm not saying you're supposed to drive and just <laughs> stop looking at the uh, the street or the expressway. But take moments when you, your car is parked or when you're at your office and you can go on the balcony and just sit and look at the sky and just appreciate its existence. That's the bright... That's... That's all under being vibrant. That's all under living a very fulfilling life, appreciating the little things. Because as you focus on the little things and you see how beautiful the little things are, the things that are negative become small. They get less attention. You decrease the intensity of the emotion behind the negativity. Let me say that again. The things that are beautiful and you appreciate and you spend time diving in and just appreciating the small things, it makes the negative things smaller. You remove the intensity of the emotion behind the negativity. You don't dive into as much time as you would on a negative because there's only two things that's going to happen either you dive into the negative and stay there and stay at a bad place or you dive into the negative to make it better and I would choose to dive into the negative to make it better more than anything if I see myself just focused on the negative and they're not getting better, but I'm just putting all this time and energy behind it, stop it. 
Stop yourself. Catch yourself. Be your own best friend enough to say, hey, 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 you're going too far in your thoughts. You're going too far in your thoughts. Slow down. Take a minute. The negative might be a very well reality. However, do you have to focus on it? No. Is there so much more to focus on? Yes. And so, you know, I always have these sidebar messages before I talk to my t- talk about my topics sometimes. And so, I just needed to share that with y'all just so y'all remain at a place where y'all ever growing and ever learning and ever becoming different. Different in a way that makes you better. So be encouraged. Tonight's topic is love. We did the series on judgment and I knew it was very timely to focus on love because the more you dive into love and understanding love and connecting with others in a loving way, the less judgmental you are. We, just as humans, have a tendency to judge minute by minute, second by second. However, if we focus more on love, those thoughts judgment become less and sometimes you have to go mute it's okay to be quiet a wise man is best unheard at best unheard you don't need to voice or say something about everything that's going on sometimes you just need to be quiet And through that quietness, you find wisdom. Because wisdom will teach you life is about chess, not checkers. Life is about chess, not checkers. That means you have to think beyond your initial response towards any situation. There are exceptions where you don't have time to think of life as chess. But for the majority of your life, you should be thinking like chess. So diving in the topic of love, I feel like it's very important, especially when relating to yourself and relating to others. I am a firm, firm believer You can only love in the capacity you have experienced love. And some people have experienced love in such a small capacity that they can't express it in big ways. And they're limited. Can they grow out of that? Sure. It's the main reason why the um, R&B artist music came out with Teach Me How to Love. And other artists talked about love. Because at the end of the day, we find our limits. And do we stay there? No. We can grow to be even better. In the in the realm of love. And before I think talk about <clears throat> all the compartments under love and expressing love. I just want to talk about love in its essence. Many don't know what love looks like when it comes to loving themselves. They beat themselves up every single day. This not right, that's not right, this not right, that's not right. And they're so critical and judgmental towards themselves that they go in the world with that same posture. And people confuse 
that they're just critical people, but they're people also where their love bank is at a negative. And love is so amazing that it covers. It covers the most frail, most weak parts of our body. And by body meaning any part that we find vulnerability in. It covers that. However, love is so personal that sometimes when we don't get love from certain people, we don't open ourselves up to love from other people. For example, if your mom wasn't in your life or she wasn't as loving as you wanted her to be, regardless how many other females come into your life as mother figures, you still resort back to the fact that you didn't have that love from your mom. And because of that, you stifle and shorten all connections that you can have with females. And sometimes you may even pervert it out of a sense of control. Well, I don't want to be vulnerable to love, so I'll make it sexual. And you become even more damaged in that area. (laughs) Or you didn't receive love from your father, or your father wasn't there. And because of that, regardless what male you come in contact with and how loving they express themselves, you don't receive it because that initial love from a father was not there. And so you limit people connections with you, you push their intimacy far away from you, and you become your own enemy. Because at the end of the day, everyone needs love. Everyone desires love. It's something so powerful about love. Even studies then came out that people that are in more loving connections live longer. They do. And so when even when you look at that, you have to acknowledge your need and want for love. And it's okay. It's okay. But the uneasiness that you might feel when we're talking about the topic of love and vulnerability and the openness and how frail your heart is. Even when talking about that, you have to resolve the unmet expectations that were very realistic. And you have to resolve the emotions that you feel around those unmet expectations. And just dealing with the mother and the father connections and that expectation. That expectation is normal. That expectation is very real. That expectation is something you was wired to have. And when it gets unmet, you have to face number one, it's unmet. And number two, you forgive the unmet need. And by that, I mean, you don't always have to talk about it to that individual, that mother or that father, but you have to resolve it within your heart. And when you resolve it within your heart, 